Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here, and in this video we're going to be looking at Guild Wars 2 running on Ubuntu through Wine. So this is going to be a revisit video, much like uh, Expander's revisit video about a year ago. In this video, we're going to be looking at a couple of sections. Uh, the first part will be installing Guild Wars 2, and this section will be covering everything from installing it from the internet downloader to installing it from the physical disks like I have here. Then the second part will be logging in and patching, seeing whether these two things work and if they work, do they work well. And lastly to that section we'll be deciding on whether or not there are additional tricks that we need to run the game properly, if at all. The next section is related to performance. In this part we're looking at the frames per second from several different perspectives. Uh, the first is that we're going to be running it in windowed mode and then we're going to attempt to run it in full screen mode or at least full screen windowed mode depending on what we can get working. We're going to take a look at whether or not the frames per second are affected by that. Then we're going to go on to the settings. If we change the settings, does it affect the frames per second? You know, from low to high, what does it do? And then we're also going to take a look at the CPU core utilization. Does it use more than one core? And lastly, I'm also going to try and put in the GL Threaded Optimizations 1, which is an NVIDIA specific trick, and just to see whether or not we'll get additional frames or not from that. Does it do anything? The third section is related to uh, the gameplay. This one is more related to the functionality of the game, you know. Does the mouse look work at all? Does it have problems like it did when it got first released? Running full screen, is that a possibility? Uh, does it crash when I run the game? And I will try and look at trading posts and gem stores, but I don't really spend money in the game. Lastly will just be a summary. Uh, the improvements from two years ago compared to now, what's improved, and the quirks, what kind of problems do we run into. So let's get right into the video. Installing Guild Wars 2 can be done in two ways. The first is an internet only option, it's, which is where you download Guild Wars 2 using their downloader you get from their website. And the second is through the physical media, which is the discs or the hard copy. So going with the physical discs, this is the first time since I've, since beginning of the time that I've used Wine that I've ever been able to get a second disc that was read properly. So upon installing it, I was able to read through the first disc and then changing into the second disc, but then sadly a quirk happened where it asked for a third disc during the installation procedure. There is no third disc, so I don't know why it asks for this, but in the end I had to cancel that and then go through with the internet downloading. So the internet option, which is downloading from their website, works very well. Under the internet option you have uh, the patching which occurs directly as you're downloading the game. So it used to be that when you first downloaded the game, it would crash a lot. This was two years ago, and even about a year ago, it was pretty much the same thing. Every time you downloaded about every 10,000, 20,000 files, the patcher or downloader would crash. This doesn't happen anymore. The only crash I experienced was once. When I first started up the installer, it crashed once, restarting back up, and then from beginning to the end, logging straight into the game, it worked just fine. So that brings us to the last part, which is logging in, and that works right off the bat. You will notice though, that when you first try to log in, and it's always with the first login, that a error will occur regarding your firewall status, but this can be completely ignored. You go ahead and close that and then enter your password once more and then you will be able to log in. Now if you have used the ability to uh, secure your account with, uh, I think it's called account verification, where they will email you every time you want to log in, you may have to log in twice before you get the email sent to your uh, mail provider. Lastly, there was no tricks whatsoever involved in getting this up and running. Two years ago, you would need to install a couple of libraries or specific add-ons to Wine, and then you'd also need to add a uh, dash dx9 single command 
to play on Linux. This is no longer necessary. You don't have to do any tricks at all to get this up and running. So under the performance section, we first start out with the windowed mode. So as you can see here, running it in windowed mode is okay. I am running it in a wine windowed mode and the game automatically resizes itself to that window. So I'm running it at high settings, everything high, at 1600 by 900. So all these settings are pushed to the max. So if you see, once we actually move into the game, the frames per second averages generally around anywhere from 20 to sometimes reaching 30. And it's pretty much consistent like that. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you will get relatively the same frames per second at all times. So even when I go into a fight where you see there is more effects in the area, characters, scenery, frames per second stays relatively the same. It bounces between anywhere from 20 to 30. So moving on into the full screen performance. Now this is still windowed mode in Wine, but I set Wine to the resolution of my full screen which is 1920 by 1080p. So in the game it recognizes itself as a full screen situation and the, all the settings are still high, maxed out. So despite running it at 1920 by 1080p, you're going to notice in a moment when we get into some action that the frames per second doesn't actually change that much. So when we first start out we see it go below 20 quite a bit as it loads the area. It will do this regardless of where you go. If you're loading the area it's going to drop below 20. So once we start to even out the area, you're going to notice that it still sits in the 20 region. So even once we start fighting, seeing 24, 27 frames per second, the only time we actually see drop is when it's rendering in the distance. So regardless of the resolution, it currently remains with the same frames per second. So. What happens if we have different settings? On settings low, I'm still seeing the 20 frames per second region with it dropping below 20 when it's loading the area. In the distance or up close, still 20 frames per second. Looking 24, 25, going up to 29 there. 28, 27. Nothing spectacular despite everything set to absolutely low at 1600 by 900. So what happens when we set everything to max in the same resolution setting? It's exactly the same. The frames per second doesn't seem to be changed by the resolution or the settings, the graphical settings of the game. So what about CPU core utilization? With everything else closed except for the screen recorder and Guild Wars 2, I went and opened up my system monitor to go ahead and check it out and all cores and threads are being used and pretty heavily as well I might add. And the majority of them are being used by Guild Wars 2 if we were to go into the processes tab. So as you can see at the very top it's Guild Wars 2 utilizing it the most. So there's one last thing I wanted to try out and that is a trick that is specific to Nvidia cards which people usually tell me to go ahead and try so I wanted to see if I could try this. I hopefully did it correctly in Play on Linux. So basically it's adding a command called GL Threaded Optimizations which passes certain workloads from the Nvidia GPU to the CPU. I just wanted to do this to see if I could get better frames per second or not. Once again it's pretty much indifferent. Now this is a pretty hectic scene, so we are losing the, it looks like about 5 to 10 frames per second. So mouse look works just fine. There's no more issues here. Full screen and window work, but not true full screen. We still need the wine window open all at all times. What about crashing you might ask? There was none whatsoever while I was playing the game. It was a solid experience all the way throughout which was very wonderful. Lastly, trading posts and the gem store. From what I could see the gem store was available and working and I actually tried selling or was it buying something through the trading store, uh, the trading posts and it did work.
All right, summary time. So first up, let's go with the quirks. Uh, when you're installing it through the physical media, there's two disks. The first disk get re gets read, the second disk gets read, but then during the installation, for some reason, it asks for a third disk, even though there is none. This doesn't happen in Windows, it only happens in Wine. When you remove the Wine window from the game and you try to make it full screen using the default resolution of your distribution, it will lock up the UI completely, rendering your system practically useless, uh, basically like a hang. So that's an issue, although you can run it in Windows full screen. There is always a firewall error upon the first login, but this is easily bypassed. It's a very small issue, it's just it may worry new users. After two years, FPS is still low. The frames per second is 30 at best. When compared to Windows, I can actually bring it up to over 100 on the same hardware. I know it's not running natively on the Linux side, but after two years, I expected a bit more than a 10 to 20 frames per second increase. That said though, when you change the settings or the resolution of the game itself, it doesn't actually affect the frames per second, it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. So it looks to be an issue inside Wine's rendering pipeline, I assume. So if they were able to crank up the performance there, I think we'd be able to see uh, a lot better in terms of frame rates for Guild Wars 2 on Wine. So ending it on a good note, let's go through a list of the improvements. Now, two years ago, there was graphical glitches if you ran through Wine. None of that anymore. Uh, the patcher works almost completely from beginning to end. The only time it crashed for me was when I first opened it up, trying to run the installer. After I reopened it up after that, no crashes, so you can leave the patcher on from night to morning, and you'll wake up knowing that's fully downloaded your game. So that's a good fix. Uh, FPS, while not amazing, definitely not in the difference between Windows native and then running it on Wine, it is playable, alright? 30 frames per second is playable, and if you're running on newer hardware, you're probably likely to see better frame rates than I am. A really nice thing was that there is no tricks needed to install this in Wine anymore. You don't need to put commands, you don't need to install additional things in Play on Linux. You just go ahead and install the game in a new prefix, okay? Uh, mouse look works completely. Previously when it came out, there was issues trying to turn to the right or to the left. That doesn't happen anymore. Completely works all the way around. It also utilizes more than one core. I believe one of the issues when it first came out and running on one was that it only utilized one core. Now at least from my tests, it shows that it utilizes all my cores and all my threads. And lastly, trading posts and I think the gem store works. I didn't actually test the gem store, but I know trading post works. So all in all, right now, if you were to run it up in the latest wine, and if you were running a newer AMD or NVIDIA card, you should be able to get it up and running. Note though, it may be a bit flaky on the AMD side. I'm not sure how that may go. So that is it for this video, guys. Uh, I hope it was beneficial to you in one way or another. I apologize if I've made any mistakes. Please go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions or any ways that I can improve. And thank you for watching.